Welcome to Logarithmic Functions. That's quite the intro. All right. All right. Thanks, man. Now, uh, in St. Louis, we have TED Talk Tuesday in my class. So we do a TED Talk every Tuesday. And uh, I'm excited to say this is my this is my TED Talk that, that's out there on the net. And so we're going to let you watch that. If you want to watch it uh, in, in big screen or whatever, you want to show your mom what a beautiful person I am, you know, there's the YouTube link. And let's see if this... Difference between point zero 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 three nine eight and point zero 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 three nine eight cause one to have red eyes after swimming. To answer this, we first need a way of dealing with rather small numbers, or in some cases, extremely large numbers. This leads us to the concept of logarithms. Well, what are logarithms? Let's take the base number b and raise it to a power p, like two to the third power, and have it equal a number n. We get an exponential equation, b raised to the p power equals n. In our example, that'd be 2 raised to the third power equals 8. The exponent p is said to be the logarithm of the number n. Most of the time, this will be written log base b of the number equals p to the power. This is starting to sound a bit confusing with all the variables. So let's show this with an example. What is the value of log base 10 of 10,000? The same question could be asked using exponents. 10 raised to what power is 10,000? Well, 10 to the fourth is 10,000. So log base 10 to 10,000 must equal four. This example can also be completed very simply on a scientific calculator. Log base 10 is used so frequently in the sciences that it has the honor of having its own button on most calculators. If the calculator will figure out logs for me, why study them? Just a quick reminder, the log button only computes logarithms of base 10. What if you want to go into computer science and need to understand base 2? So what is log base 2 of 64? In other words, 2 raised to what power is 64? Well, use your fingers. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. So log base 2 of 64 must equal 6. So what does this have to do with my eyes turning red in some swimming pools and not others? Well, it leads us into an interesting use of logarithms in chemistry. Finding the pH of water samples. pH tells us how acidic or basic a sample is and can be calculated with the formula pH equals negative log base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration, or H+. We can find the pH of water samples with hydrogen ion concentration of 0.00000000398 and 0.00000000398. Quickly on a calculator, punch it negative log of each of those numbers. And you'll see the pHs are 7.4 and 8.4. Since the tears in our eyes have a pH of about 7.4, the H plus concentration of 0 0.70398 will feel nice on your eyes, but the pH of 8.4 will make you feel itchy and red. It's easy to remember logarithms, log base b of some number n equals p by repeating the base raised to what power equals the number. The base raised to what power equals the number. The base raised to what power equals the number. So now we know logarithms are very powerful when dealing with extremely small or large numbers. Logarithms can even be used instead of eyebrows after swimming. All right, that was exciting. Okay. You know, I, and I will say, uh, we're two months into that being released. I'm at 37,000 hits on YouTube. It's nothing compared to the monkey falling off a tree or yeah, something right, like that. Right. But you get the general idea. You put kittens in the title, it, it, you'd be... Okay, thank you. So let's try the, the concept here. We're going to say this is supposed to be log base 2 of 16. This is supposed to be a subscript down there, but it, the, the computer doesn't always show it so well. So this is going to say 2 raised to what power equals 16. So 2 raised to what power is 16, Mr. Creswell? 4. So the answer to this is 4. 2 to the 4th power is 16. Let's try this one. Oh, it's a little trickier. So log base 6. So 6 raised to what power is 1 over 36? Oh, man. Well, I know 6 to the 2 power is 36, but I want that 36 to be on the bottom of the fraction. So what are, what are we going to make it? Better make it a negative. Negative 2. So negative 2. 6 raised to the negative 2 is 1 over 36. 
or one over six to the two six two squared. Power. Yeah. So so what's the answer to this? Well, be negative two because six to the negative two is one over thirty six. All right. Last one for me. Five raised to what power is one? Five raised to what power is one? Well, anything to the zero power is one. So anything. It, let me rephrase that. Anything to the zero power is one. Anything to the zero power is one. That'd make a great T-shirt, wouldn't it? Anything to the zero power is one. So this is going to be zero. Five to the zero is one. Two. So this first property, if I if I wanted to look at an example, two to the log base, two, of any number. Any number equals any number. Okay. So basically, if I have the log base something of x equals something, and I raise it to that power, I raise it to the same. Yeah, I, I was I was telling my kids this cancels itself out. This cancels itself out. And that's always the answer. So if we had 5 raised to the log base 5 of 81, the answer would be 81. That, sorry about my handwriting there. OK, now these properties of logarithms are, are going to come up over and over when you're trying to solve exponential and logarithmic equations. So we're just kind of giving you uh, all of the properties. Probably a good idea to write them on one chunk of notes with a little star byte or something like that. Now, one of the special logarithms is called the natural logarithm. All right, so we've talked about log base 5. We talked about log base 10. The video talked about log base 2 for computer science. Well, in the last video, we talked about this number e being uh, very prevalent in, in math and science. So there, it, in fact, it's there so much that it has its own special logarithm. So log base e is the same as the natural log. Ln for log of the natural number or something like that. So we, we have properties for natural logarithms here. Ln of 1, this is a 1, is 0. In other words, let's, let's, let's write that another way. Log base e of 1 equals 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So that's something to remember. Ln of 1 equals 0. That'd be another great t-shirt idea. Um, let's look at this one. Log base e of e equals 1. e raised to what power? e raised to the 1 power is e. That kind of makes sense when you write it out the other way. But I was just kind of memorized those when I was your age. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have somebody explain that out, or they did, and I just wasn't paying attention. Right. Oh. Um, this one, for now, until Mr. Creswell gets done, we're going to say, uh, write it down, and then he's going to talk to you about something special you could do with that exponent right all right, sorry about that. We probably should put that on the next screen. And this bottom one is exactly what he just talked about on the other screen. He said e, and we'll change this to log base e of x. Hey, look, that's going to cancel itself out, so the answer is x. Yay, all the excitement. All right, now, I'm going to let Mr. Creswell go, but notice this. Copy this page down. Indicating the importance of this page. <laughs> All right, go for okay, it. Okay, we've got a couple properties here. If I have the log base b of two numbers that are multiplied together, I can break that up into the log base b, notice the bases are the same, of the first number, um, plus the log base, same base, log base b of the second number. And, and ba backwards. And backwards, backwards, right. If two logs are being added together, addition in, in logarithms means multiplication. Addition means multiplication. And very similar when I have a divided by b, um, that's the same thing as two logs subtracted from each other. So when you see division, think subtraction. It's always the top one minus the bottom uh, one. The yeah. top one minus the bottom one. All right. Um, and this one is a pretty powerful rule, too. If I have the log base b of some number x raised to a power, I can take this power and put it out front. Um, so I have y times the log base b of the base. Yeah, now I'm going to go backwards for a second. As I said, Mr. Creswell was going to teach you something. Look right here. ln of e to the y, I can bring this y out front. So we have y times the ln of e. What's, wait a minute. ln of e is 1. So that's y times 1. Hot dog. That's where the y comes from. Okay. All right, so really, you probably didn't need this. Need that property or whatever. Right, you could figure that out on your own. From yeah. another one. Right, right. But we're such wonderful human beings we gave it to. Right. 
right? And if you ever get into trouble where um, you know you got that nice log base ten button on your calculator, but if you've got a if you've got a logarithm that's something like log base of uh, seven of uh, ten, um, you can change that and put that in your calculator as the log base uh, ten, or I'm sorry, the log of ten, which is just log base ten, right? Log of ten divided by the log of Seven, and that's something that you can punch into your calculator. Yeah, I will say another thing too. It doesn't have to be log. I noticed when I used to teach chemistry, a lot of times they didn't use log; they use natural log. Yeah. So this would be ln of x over ln of b. You know, it's same thing. Yep. They they both work beautiful. So, uh, and again, no one taught me that until I was teaching chemistry, and I'm like, why is that true? Okay, so let's use our properties to expand. You know, I went to Krispy Kreme yesterday, and I'm expanding, so that means I'm getting bigger. So somehow, we must have to expand this thing out. So I've got one, two, three things being multiplied together. What does multiplication mean, Mr. Creswell? I think it means addition of log log Multiplication of logarithms means addition. So it's log of 3 plus the log of A plus the log of B cubed. Now, do you see, as a math teacher, anything else we could do on expanding that out? This looks, this looks okay. Okay there. This looks okay. I don't know about that last one. I'm thinking, wasn't there a property where we could bring this three out front? I think we can do now, that. Now, I don't know if you need to or not. When it says expand, I don't know. Why not? So, please get used to my crummy handwriting. Log base three plus... Log base of A, excuse me, log of 3 plus log of A plus, we said we're going to bring this 3 out front. So 3 log of B. So that's expanded. And now let's go the opposite direction and compress it. Okay, yeah, as we do so often in mathematics. Um, if you can go one way, we want to see if we can go back the other way. Um, the first thing that I see here is a plus, which indicates multiplication. Um, but I also have this 2 out in front of this log base 3 of y, and I think I can send that 2 out to the uh, exponent. In fact, probably better do that first. Yeah, and let's probably not... Just like we did last time, we brought the, the 3 out front as the last thing we did. Mm -hmm. This time, it's the first thing you do when right. you're trying to put them back together. Right. Okay. All right, go for it. Okay, so let's leave this left-hand thing alone here. Log base 3 of x um, plus the log base 3 of y squared. Yeah, so you took this and put it back up here as a power. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, and now we can deal with that addition, uh, and that just means I'm going to take these two and turn it into the multiplication in one logarithm. So this would be log base three of x times y squared. Yeah, and, that, oh, we should be careful. And, that, and that all goes with uh, that cheesy little property: addition of two logs means multiplication. And you're going to go through a little activity on why that's true, whatever. Right as one log. So in other words, we're compressing again. Uh, what's the first thing you would do? Um, but throw those powers up in front. Yeah, of put the, the three back the up here. Put the two back up here. So I have ln of the three's up here. So it's now x cubed and a minus the two's up here. So ln of y squared. What does subtraction in logarithms mean? Well, it means division. So if we put these two together in one log, that's x cubed divided by y squared. Oh, did you want that in parentheses? Does that make you happy? Then usually after I get done, I say, boom, math. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited for you. All right, we ran into this one. My calculator's got two buttons on it. It's got a log button, and it's got an LN button for logarithms. Now, neither one of those is log base 3. So we need a new way to do this quickly. All right, because I, I, at the beginning of the lesson, we said three raised to what power equals five? Well, three to the one power is three, three to the two power is nine. I know it's somewhere in between one and two, but I don't know what it is, and I don't feel like going through a bazillion guess and checks. So I'm gonna pull out my calculator, and I'm, I'm not really gonna cheat, but um, I'm gonna use that one property we said. You can take the log of the number, the log of the five, and divide it by the log of the base. So remember, th this is a subscript. It's down toward the bottom. I was th Remember, that's the one that goes on the bottom. So log 5 divided by log 3. So log 5, don't forget to close your parentheses, divided by log 3 equal. 
1.46. We were right, it was between one and two. I don't think I would have guessed and checked 1.46973521. You know, I, I have some spare time on the weekends, but I make videos instead. You would have made it there eventually. Thanks for taking